is Mark Wright. I would like to welcome you to this worship experience for Sunday, October 11th, offered by Elston Presbyterian Church of Lafayette, Indiana, in partnership with Bethany Presbyterian Church of Lafayette, Indiana, and Memorial Presbyterian Church of Dayton, Indiana. We are glad you have joined us for worship today and pray you will be blessed by this experience. We pray also that you are staying safe and well as we continue to distance ourselves from one another to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Out of concern for the well-being and safety of all within our communities of faith, our congregations have suspended in-person worship for the foreseeable future and until further notice. So please plan to worship with us by video for the time being. According to Wikipedia, Stone Soup is a European folk story in which hungry strangers convince the people of a town to each share a small amount of their food in order to make a meal that everyone enjoys. It exists as a moral regarding the value of sharing. The story begins with some travelers arriving in a village, carrying nothing more than an empty cooking pot. Upon their arrival, the villagers are unwilling to share with the hungry travelers. Then the travelers go to a stream and fill the pot with water, drop a large stone in it, and place it over a fire. One of the villagers becomes curious and asks what they are doing. The travelers answer that they are making stone soup, which tastes wonderful, but the flavor could be improved. The villager, who anticipates enjoying a share of the soup, does not mind parting with a few carrots, so these are added to the soup. So the story goes with more and more villagers, each contributing what they have available to enhance the flavor of the soup. The result is a delicious and nourishing pot of soup that is enjoyed by hungry travelers and villagers alike. The same is true for the church. By each of us contributing what we are able we can do much more for the kingdom of God than any of us could do alone. Though the story of stone soup is not a biblical narrative, this parable points to the truth that the Apostle Paul proclaims when he says in his first letter to the Corinthians, There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all people. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Or in the Gospel according to Luke, when Jesus lifts up the poor widow for her seemingly meager contribution, saying, She out of her poverty put in all the livelihood that she had. Time and again throughout the pages of Scripture, we see what good things some may even say miraculous things can happen when the people of God work together, each using their unique gifts, each contributing what they are able in terms of time, talent, and treasure. The hungry are fed, the naked are clothed, the sick are healed, and all are cared for. Whether or not you are a member of either the Memorial or Bethany Presbyterian congregations and have already received an estimate of giving card for the coming year, we invite everyone to prayerfully consider making a spiritual commitment to share of your resources, no matter how big or small, in the coming year. Together we can do wonderful, even miraculous things to advance God's kingdom purposes here on earth to the benefit of not only those who are hungry, but all within our communities. Stewardship Consecration Sunday for Bethany and Memorial Presbyterian Churches will be next Sunday, October 18th. Please prayerfully consider what you can contribute to the purposes of God's kingdom in our midst. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God.
join me in the responsive call to worship. Come, all who hunger for good news. We thirst for words of hope and healing. Come from rural road and city street. We gather at the King's invitation. Come, join the celebration. Let us worship the Lord. Friends, hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Believe the good news, live the good news, and accept the mercy and the grace of God the Father Almighty that is available to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And go forth, renewed and refreshed this day. Amen. <laughs>
God's forgiveness, we also know the peace, the peace that passes all understanding. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. It may be a little bit different as we uh, encourage peace with those around us, as we're not in contact with each other physically as much as we are used to. But I encourage you to share the peace of Christ with others in whatever way it is possible to do so. Rick, may the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you, Laura. And Kevin, may the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Holy Spirit of God, shine your light upon this word and into our hearts, that we may be enlightened with fresh understanding. Amen. The Hebrew lesson today comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 32, verses 1 through 14. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us. Who shall go before us? As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them, and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains? and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven. All this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. This morning's gospel lesson is taken from Matthew 22, verses 1 through 14. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered. Everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves mistreated them and killed them. 
The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets. Invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out to the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. And then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, throw him into the outer darkness, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Keep these words in your heart. The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, open our hearts and minds to your word through the words that I'll be sharing in this morning's sermon. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Coming to the party. In our gospel lesson today, Jesus tells about invited guests who fail to show for the wedding of the king's son. People don't usually fail to show up for a palace wedding. When a king's son or daughter gets married, everyone wants to come. It's almost unthinkable that anyone would fail to show. But stranger things have happened. There are the times when either the bride or the groom just doesn't show up for the services. And in other cases, the services are canceled by the bride or groom shortly before the day. So strange things do happen at weddings. And Jesus told about a strange thing. A king invited people to his son's wedding and nobody showed up. They gave excuses. They even mistreated the servants that the king sent to them. So the king punished them. Then he sent his servants to invite whomever they could. Go into the streets, he said. Find me some guests. So the servants went to the streets and invited everyone they saw, good and bad. And they filled the banquet hall with guests, which is what the king needed. He couldn't have a party in an empty hall. But then the king noticed a guest who was not wearing a wedding robe. Everyone else had robes, but this man did not. The king told his servants to throw the man out, to cast him into outer darkness. And then Jesus concluded this parable by saying, For many are called, but few chosen. Hmm. You know, I wouldn't blame you if you said, That story doesn't make much sense. Frankly, the first time I read it, I thought the same thing. But then I studied it, and I learned that it does make sense, that it has something important to say to us today. So let me explain it briefly. In this story, the king is God. The invited guests are Israel. The mistreated servants are the prophets, God's messengers. Israel was infamous for mistreating the prophets. The people from the streets were the Gentiles. This then is the story of Israel rejecting the prophets, rejecting Jesus, and losing their place to the front of the line. The story of God wanting faithful people, opening the door to all sorts of people to fill the banquet hall. But it's also the story of God offering to follow Jesus and then failing to do so. It might be our story. We're always tempted to accept the invitation to follow Jesus and then to balk when it comes time to pay the price. Sometimes following Christ is difficult. As the United Methodist Bishop of Atlanta, Will Williman, told of a man under his charge, told Williman not to worry about the low salary he was receiving. He said that he had been in a job with a six-digit salary when Jesus called him to quit that job and go to seminary. Sometimes following Christ does involve real sacrifice. But I doubt that Christ has called you to quit your $100,000 job to go to seminary. But he has called you to faithful discipleship. And what does that mean? Well, it means you remember your baptismal vows. 
that even if you were baptized as an infant, you're renewed in joining the church. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? How's that going for you? It means that Christ has called you to be faithful with your time, to devote time to prayer, to public worship, to service in the church. It means that Christ has called you to be faithful with your money, to tithe, to support your church financially, to help needy people. It means that Christ has called you to be honest in your dealings with other people, to be honest in financial dealings, to be honest in relationships. It means that Christ has called you to live a life that will draw people to Christ, including your family. Christ calls you to love your family to be kind to them, to witness to them, to be the kind of person they will want to follow. And of course, it means raising your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. It means bringing them to church, to Sunday school, to youth group. It means reading Bible stories to them, praying with them, loving them, guiding them. It means knowing where they are and who their friends are. It also means getting involved sometimes meddling in their affairs. Now those are some of the things that Christ calls all of us to do. But he probably has other designs on your life as well. He might want you to be in a leadership position with the church. This time of the year, it's a popular thing to be asked. Maybe an elder, maybe a deacon, or maybe getting to serve on a great Presbyterian committee. And he might want you to quit your $100,000 job and go to seminary. He might want you to feed the hungry. Listen. Just listen for that invitation. And when it comes, don't fail to obey. And then Jesus told about the man who came to the wedding in the wrong clothing. He was supposed to wear a wedding robe, but he came in his frungies. The king had the man cast into the outer darkness. That is where the weeping and grinding of teeth will be. Eee. What was that all about? Well, the wedding robe in this story stands for clean living, sort of righteous living. A man who came to the party without a robe is like the Christian who says that he will follow Jesus, but who continues to live in a sin. It's like a person who goes camping for a week and then shows up unshaven and unwashed at a formal party. That's almost worse than a showing up, not showing up at all. And in this parable, Jesus warns that he won't tolerate the person who claims to be a Christian continues to live as always. He expects us to show up, but then he also expects us to grow in grace, to become new people whose lives reflect that we belong to him. And that doesn't mean that Christ requires us to be perfect. Far from it. Christ is happy to forgive our sins, and we all need forgiveness. There are limits. This parable teaches us that when we give our lives to Christ, he expects that to make a difference. He expects us to begin to change. He expects us to let the Spirit begin reshaping our lives. If we insist on coming to the party unshaven and unwashed, dressed in our grungies, if we insist on living in rebellion, it is as bad as not showing up at all. Now let me close this sermon by asking you to do a couple of things this week. First, let me ask you to listen, to listen for Christ's invitation to you, to listen so you will hear where he wants you to be, and what he wants you to do. And when you hear this call, answer it. Come to the party. And second, let me ask you to examine your life. Have you given your life to Christ? Has that really made a difference? Do you spend time in worship? In prayer, are you willing to let God reshape you to someone beautiful, someone holy? Let me invite you to do that as well. Christ has some really big plans for you, for you personally. He plans to use you to make your family into something beautiful. He plans to use you to make your workplace a beautiful place. He plans to use you to make this church beautiful. He also 
wants to use you to make your community beautiful and to make your world beautiful. But first, you must let him make you beautiful. Let Christ reshape your life. Let him make you into a new person. And if you will be faithful to him, he will be faithful to you. He will give you a better life than you ever expected. And my prayer is that you will just let him begin that process today. Amen. Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to be singing for you, He Will Hold Me Fast. I hope you feel compelled to sing along with me. Christ. 
love and blessings to you all. Please join with me in the affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in the spirit of prayer. O oh Lord our God, we pause and we give you thanks that in spite of our unworthiness, that you have shown us love, you have shown us grace, you have shown us mercy. O oh God, you have invited us to be participants in a great banquet. Forgive us for the times when we have been stubborn, stiff-necked people, when we have chased after other gods, when we have failed to show up, to live as the people you call us to be. Empower us, O oh God. Renew us again and again as we trust is a part of your very nature, is a part of your steadfast love, your unending mercy. Help us to live into the redeeming work that has been done in the person of Jesus, by whose death and resurrection we have already been saved. And so sanctify us, O oh God. Help us to grow into the people you have called us to be. Help us to live even now in the ways of your kingdom, which is already breaking into the world and is yet to come. O oh God, when we look around, we see so many things that do not align with the values of your kingdom. We see tension between different races of your created people. We see unfair treatment of others, of your beloved children. We see poverty, illness, things that we can and have the power to do something about. We see strife and discord and war. And so help us to be makers of peace. Help us to be those people you call us to be in Matthew 25, those who offer food to the hungry, shelter to the homeless, a cup of cold water to the thirsty, healing to the sick, binding up those who are broken. Again, O oh God, empower us to live as the people you know we can be, that you created us to be, that you redeemed us to be. Help us be your body out into the world to carry your kingdom message and your good news, your love and redemption to all people. All of this we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ, the one who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved, do not worry about anything, but in everything let your requests be made known to God. 
And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In assurance of this promise, let us confidently offer ourselves to God, knowing that God has already provided all that we need. In response to the gospel message, in response to the word that we have heard today, we are compelled, we are invited to respond through an offering of ourselves, our gifts, and our talents. We invite you, if you would like to, at this time, to make a financial contribution to one of the three congregations hosting this service, the Elston Presbyterian Church, Bethany Presbyterian Church, or the Memorial Presbyterian Church.